So I think we have, in general, a fantastic community when it comes to cybersecurity. I found it a really supportive community in general. Lots of people who have helped, supported and championed me. And I see that happening with lots of people, lots of positivity out there. Um, there are, of course, unfortunately, some negative elements. Um, one thing that we can um, become... Uh, that can become a problem, I think, in this community is when, for example, we see sort of negative elements on social media, um, where we can see people being, um, there's a lot of bravado or people being criticized for not knowing something. So I think as a community, we need to really focus on amplifying the positive, which is the majority. And I think if we continue to amplify that positive, to support people, to band together, and to recognize that really, ultimately, we're we're all doing this for the same reason. We want to make people, organizations, the world a safer place. And with that mission in mind, how can we not band together um, and be positive and supportive of one another? I think there's still a disconnect between um, hackers and suits. And people are probably like, what is a hacker? What's a suit? Um, well, the suits are, you know, your corporate people, the people that are just they're just running the game. This could be sales, this could be marketing and whatnot. And what's happening is I see a huge disconnect every time I go to like a big conference, so like RSA or Black Hat, there's still not enough of communication between two parties. And I see there being an issue there because that means we don't have bilateral trust with each other. And that's a huge security risk for us all. And that's probably one of the reasons why only 60% of secure researchers will report a vulnerability that and being prosecuted. So I think that's one of the other situations we're definitely facing because if 93% of like Forbes 2000 company list still does not have a vulnerability disclosure program, we are basically asking to please attack us and uh, never share ahead of time like that there's this uh, possibility of a breach. So I think that's one of the, and also for marketing and sales people to note that not all hackers wear black hoodies and sit in the basement and, uh, and also have ski masks on. I really don't understand the whole ski mask thing because honestly, you can cover your camera lens. So there's really no point of wearing that. And I don't know about you, but I have sensitive skin. So that would be really itchy. Um, so I think that's the real thing is that there's still a huge disconnect between the hacker community and the suit community. And the thing is they have to realize that they wouldn't have a business without them at the end of the day. So it's really important for us to kind of come together and question these biases and stereotypes that we have of hackers and start working with them so then we could be even better all together. But for me, it's getting the awareness out there much sooner and making folks realize the overall importance of you know making sure everybody is well versed in cyber and cybersecurity. I mean, it's not enough to get you to a point and say, here's all your your tools and your weapons to do battle in this industry. Here's your new firewall. Here's your new uh, cloud security. Here's your new you know other device that is going to make your job early easier if you don't actually know how to do the underlying theory of it. So the community itself is a real, we find it's a super strong community. I mean, willing to share, willing to, you know, rising tide, rising tide raises all ships mentality. Uh, so we're really thrilled with that. Kind of one more thing to, to um, sort of burn the teams on. I mean, ultimately, our goal should not be to build another tool to sell to another company. It should be to solve the problems of the organization and to streamline the things that are, are being, are being, <clears throat> that are having there being issues we shouldn't add more tools that require more people mm -hmm. um, we should be thinking about how do we how do we solve for um, better automation of things that we don't need as many people to, uh, to, to actually use and do uh, yeah yeah well, I think there are a lot of efforts across the board on how to make things better, but one of the key areas is look. Bugs happen for a reason. Um, part of the reason is that developers, you know, whether they went to college for it or not, I didn't go to college for computer science, but developers have a lack of training in writing secure code. This isn't really about waiting until the bugs are created um, and, and then playing whack-a-bug and trying to report them and get them fixed. This should be about security by design. And I think that one of the main things um, you know, that we lack in our industry is there's no market incentive 
for vendors to build things securely from the ground up because you're either first to market or you're dead. And I think we've got an incentive problem here in actually addressing the root cause problem. Um, the one other thing that we have that's a big problem is that, look, with IoT devices, there's a question of, look, you want to support innovation, you don't want to slow down innovation, and you don't want to create more you know, essentially electronic junk. We've already got landfills full of old computers and phones. What happens, you know, when you require <clears throat> IoT vendors to support uh, security patches indefinitely? Well, you'll drive those vendors out of the market. So we don't have a good solution to drive security where it really has good ROI, which is at the beginning of the design phase of software or hardware. Join an ISAC. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I say that because an ISAC really is, if you look at an ISAC, it is a almost like a micro example of our ecosystem as a security community. So what we are doing and in, in how we work together with our community is our organizations are enabling companies who otherwise would be competitors in the marketplace. You know, you have these very large retail companies who on a day-to-day -day basis compete with one another, but we're there to be that neutral environment where we're fostering sharing, we're fostering best practices and discussion so that collectively people can come overcome those challenges that everyone's struggling with.